Let's go ahead from the beginning, starting with our equation for the intertemporal budget line and turning it into our y equals mx plus b form so we can analyze it a little more. If you haven't done this yet, I suggest pausing this video and trying it yourself so you get comfortable with this equation. Starting from the beginning, we know that the present value of lifetime consumption has to equal the present value of lifetime resources. The reason for this is our assumption that says there's no resources left over at the end. So all of our consumption has to equal all of our resources. We start that way by saying, okay, the present value of lifetime consumption is C1 plus C2 over 1 plus R, and our present value of lifetime resources ends up being Y1 plus W1 plus Y2 plus W2 all over 1 plus R. Now, a few things to recognize here. We're in just a two-period model. We're in just a two-period model. And this is how we find the present value of some future amount. So it's our future consumption, but we have to, what we say, discount it by one plus the real interest rate. As a review, consumption is C, income is Y, wealth is W, R is the real interest rate. Okay, so our goal here is to get this into you know, our normal y equals mx plus b form. Uh, so this is like a basic linear form that you would have learned in your first algebra class. In this case, well, we'll go down here. We have some notes down here, right? We know this is c1, this is c2. So this right here is my x, this is my y. Meaning that we're going to want this to be c2 equals something times c1 plus whatever our intercept is, is going to be. So, so let's work with that. We're going to try and solve this out for C2. Well, the first thing is, is let's go ahead and get rid of, um, let's get rid of these denominators, right? We don't want any fractions in here. So we're going to multiply both sides by one plus R. So we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by one plus R. As I distribute this through, I now get C1 times one plus R. Plus, well, that's actually going to cancel out with this one, so it's plus C2 equals, same thing, we're going to distribute this through to both things. We're going to get Y1 plus W1 times 1 plus R plus, these are going to cancel for that uh, term, and we get Y2 plus W2. Next, we want to do is we want to make sure that we are, again, solving right down here. We're solving for C2. That's going to be our Y variable. So we're just going to have to subtract C1 times 1 plus R from both sides. So let's subtract C1 times 1 plus R from both sides. That's going to go away. So I'm going to be left with C2 equals, and I'm going to um, have my Y1 plus W1 times 1 plus R plus Y2 plus W2 minus C1 times 1 plus R. This right here is what we are looking for. And what do we notice here, right? We have this part right here, which ends up being that vertical intercept. You can think of this as my Y intercept because it's the, the vertical axis. And then we know this right here, right? This is gonna be my slope. But we also know it's a negative sign right there, right? So we know it's gonna be negative slope. So what this tells us, make this a little smaller so we can kind of write this out, is my Y intercept, meaning the place that it's going to again up here cross that vertical line is going to be Y1 plus W1 times one plus R plus y2 plus w2. So that's always going to be that way in our two period model. And then our slope is going to be equal to negative one plus r. Now, this is going to tie into a lot of the other stuff that we've already talked about, about shifting, um, about rotating, all the other stuff. And we're going to tackle that in the next video. So this video itself was to make sure that you're comfortable with starting with present value of lifetime consumption equaling present value of lifetime resources, stating what those two things are, solving out for this y equals mx plus b type form, our linear line type form, so we can easily visualize what the vertical intercept is going to be on this graph and what the slope is going to be on this graph. We have our y-intercept and our slope right here. 
Hopefully you're able to do that. If not, rewatch this video and make sure you're comfortable with this algebra.